Hi, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Samantha and in today's video we're going to be making a wood sign. This one right here. If you haven't already watched my first video on where to get the best supplies for this project then go ahead and check that out and then come back to this video. All right, let's get into it. All right, so I have my plank of wood, saw, and this one came with a miter box. I don't think I'm gonna be able to use it. So what I'm gonna do is prove to you that you do not need power tools to do this project. So let's get to sawing and hurry up and get this done so we can go inside. I hate being outside. All right, so I think I'm gonna use this to prop it up. I already have my markings on here from last time. If you watched, uh, go back and watch that video if you haven't already. Um, yeah, so let's get to sawing. Mm. Okay, for some reason it was much easier on the other side. people you don't need a power tool it's not very straight but that's okay all right so I don't think I'm gonna do the rest by hand I am gonna go use a power tool but you don't need a power tool either get them to cut it for you at Home Depot or use a handsaw after we have our wood pieces cut the next step is to sand and again not using a power tool you could just use a piece of sandpaper and a block wrap that thing around grab your piece of wood and just start sanding and there we go your piece is ready now and we can get to painting so I would highly suggest getting your wood cut either at Home Depot or using a circular saw to cut your wood and then using electric sander. Uh, however, you do not need those to do this project as I've just shown you. So let's go back inside and get to working on the next steps. Now we're on the step of painting. I've got some cardboard down, some newspaper, just double layers of protection. I'm wearing an apron. Just wanna protect all surfaces. And I have the two paints that we picked up from Home Depot, the two Oops paints. So this one is a paint and primer, and then this one is uh, interior, exterior stain blocking paint. So I really wanna use this one, the paint and primer for uh, my base, and I'm hoping the white will show up on top of the black. And then you can get these little tool things from the paint department. Usually they're free, and it makes it super easy to open the paint. Oh, such a beautiful color. Okay, and then I have a popsicle stick thing, and then I'm just gonna stir the paint. It actually kind of looks more like blue. Maybe it's not black. All right, so then I have the brush, foam brush, just wanna use all of this paint and then I like holding my block up like this and just painting at an angle and I kind of hold the brush so you want to do a thin enough coat where it doesn't take nine hours to dry but you want to do a thick enough coat where you don't see the wood however if you were doing a like farmhouse looking plank then you would want to see the wood This paint is awesome though. Like sometimes I do a second coat after this one dries, but I don't think this is gonna need a second coat. I try to make sure all the brush strokes are in the same direction. So then at this point, I'll just flip the wood around. I kind of dab if there's any holes to try and get the paint down in the hole. 
I don't like seeing any of the wood in my projects. I don't like the color of wood. Okay, so now I've got the entire front face painted. So you could be done right here. However, it does look much more professional and much more well done if you do the edges like this. And this usually doesn't take much paint, usually just like the residual off of your paintbrush. Yeah, I really don't think this is black. I think this is blue. I thought it was black. Tell me what you think in the comments. Do you think that this looks more professional or this? I like finished edges. Now something else you can do is paint the opposite side, either the same color or a different color, and you can have a reversible sign. So I'm going to go ahead and do a light second coat on the front. All done. Oh. All right. So now I've got it all painted, edges and the front. So you do not want to let it dry sitting on the paper because then it will stick. So what I'm going to do is you could use um, old uh, water bottles or your milk jug, or you can set it on top of the paint can like this, but you want to have it like elevated and not touching anything. And then best case, let it sit overnight and then paint the next layer or put your letters on tomorrow. But you could also wait like a couple hours and just touch it and depending on how um, then your paint is, is how long it will take to dry. I'm going to go ahead and, um, clean my brush. And when you seal the jars like this, you should use a rubber mallet. So I'm going to go get the rubber mallet and seal it shut. All right. Rubber mallet. Closing the can. So here are the three signs that I've been using quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and start off here. My sign is 4.5 inches. Oh, I did that wrong. 4.5 inches tall. Oh my goodness. 4.5 inches tall by 18 inches long which correlates with the Leesburg sign. So the next event that I am going to, well, I have Bear Chase, but the next event is in Frederick. But Frederick has the same amount of letters as Waterford. So what I think I'm gonna do with this sign is I'm gonna do home, but I'm gonna do Maryland. So I'm gonna go into images and see So here's one right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this, but I need to I've wielded these together, so that's why it's like all attached. So now I can add the Maryland in. Let me make sure it's centered.
So I need five inches by 18 and a half. So let me go get my material. Here is what I use for stenciling. I use Oracle Masking Film 813, and I have this huge roll. I can't remember how many yards this is, but on the Amazon listing, it's like 20 yards or 50 yards or something, but when you're doing long signs like this, like think about that, that's 18, so that's quite long. I'm, I didn't mean yards, I meant feet. Uh, so this roll goes pretty fast. This is awesome because you could take the blade out, you can get your material adjusted how you want it, hold it down, and you're holding the whole length. Rather than a guillotine cutter where it could shift or move, I found that using this particular sliding one that holds and is 12 inches tall is perfect for using with vinyl. So for this project, I'm going to need to use my big mat. And like I said, I need 19 inches. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this, set it down. I still have the plastic film on it. So take it, roll it out. Okay, so this line, this line right here is 19. Okay. I found that this is the easiest way to measure. If I were using my 12 by 12 sheets and I was doing a smaller project, then I would just open this up and I would measure how much I need. However, for this project, it's much larger, so it's much more difficult. So again, I'm going to take the blade out and then I'm going to roll this through. Okay, so there's my marking. So I would rather have too much than too little. So I have it right here on the line. I'm going to drop my blade back in, cut up, cut down, boom, here's your piece. You can set this aside. The next measurement is cutting this way, so uh, five inches. All right, so five inches is this line right here. Now, you could put some washi tape down or some blue tape to hold it while you're cutting. It's up to you. So it's this line right here. I'm gonna go one over just to be safe. So this is the piece that I need. And now this piece right here, if it was smaller, I would put it in my scrap pile. However, it's still quite long. So I, what I do with my scraps like this that are too big is I make them tiny and then I just throw them inside of the roll. So I have scraps in here and I'll show you where the rest of my scraps are. So this is a project folder from the container store, and this is where I have my smaller pieces. So if I'm just working on a smaller project, not a wood sign, something smaller, then I would first go here. And I do this for all of my vinyl, so I always use my scraps first. And generally, I can make most projects out of scraps, except for the wood signs. All right, now we need to attach on to I'll definitely have to do a scrap vinyl project and add it to my Remnants to Radiance series. If you haven't watched that, go check it out. If you have a brayer, you can uh, use that right now. So now, I do two things when I'm cutting with my Cricut. So one, I look at the measurements. So this is at five and a half, and this is at 19 and a half. So then I look at my screen 
5, 19. The next step is to use this tool called Snap Mat. Now, uh, what's happening? Sorry, I need to go mess with my settings. But uh, you use Snap Mat. You have... I've only found that I can do it when I put my mat on the ground and then take a picture and then it'll show up on the screen. So let me do that real quick and I'll show you. So this is what it looks like. So I'm going to go put it on the floor and I'm going to get it to work. So now we can see what the piece of material looks like on the mat. Hit use and then we know for a fact now that our cutting space is within our material and I always do both I use the measurements and I use snap mat every time just to be sure the only time I don't use it is if I'm doing a 12 by 12 piece of vinyl or sheet of paper and I'm using the entire piece of material and there would be no reason for it to be off but I just once it starts going with the Cricut your material is gone and there's nothing you can do about it so make sure you do it right the first time okay for in my materials uh, my most commonly used are fabrics, cotton and flannel, for paper, sticker paper, removable, uh, cardstock, medium cardstock, or heavyweight watercolor, and then vinyl, matte vinyl, and everyday iron-on. So in this case, I'm going to use matte vinyl, and I always turn my pressure to more, just as a safe bet, because I want to do it right the first time. And then I'm going to make sure that I don't have anything clamp A, and that I have my fine point blade and clamp B and I'm going to go ahead and load this guy in and let him cut it out. All right, let's get going. And this is the Cricut Maker and I have mine on this three-tier cart. The reason I have it like this is because when you use things like these big mats, you need to make sure that there's nothing behind it. So I'm actually going to move it into the middle of my carpet right here so that it doesn't hit on either side. Uh, this part is really crappy. I really don't like it, but it really does get the job done. But I can scooch it and know that, that it's all good on the back side. All right, it's all done cutting. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's kind of hard. So go ahead and unload. And now we're going to get to eating. Oh, there. Now you can see it. Um... So I have my different Cricut tools here. I have left my vinyl on the mat just because it's sticky and it's gonna hold it steady as I'm trying to weed. So since we are using this as a stencil and not directly adhering it, that means that we wanna take out the pieces that we would then paint. So I'm taking out the Maryland. I'm taking out the H. So this sign will be available at the spring market days that I will be at at Chartreuse & Co. in Frederick, Maryland next week along with more signs and paper crafts and sewn items. Boom! We did. Done. Trash. Okay, so scraps. Here are my scrap um, transfer sheets because these can be used about a million times. So this was the original brand that I had and I had this roll, oh my God, 12,000 years. I bought this roll of contact paper. <laughs> you can see the previous words I've done. And I really hated this contact roll because of the length. It was so hard to organize, I really hated it. So I bought this roll, I'll go grab it in a minute and show you what it looked, oh here. So I bought this roll. So this is a, it's like this. So this is only how high it is, is six inches, which is perfect. Generally, I do not do something bigger than six inches. And if I do, you can go like this and add a second one on like this. You can use more than one piece of uh, transfer paper. So I highly suggest getting the six inch roll, not a 12 or whatever the heck this stupid contact thing is that you get at Walmart. Don't buy it, it's annoying. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make sure I have enough pieces to cover my words. So I'm gonna use both of these pieces here. Again, if you have a brayer, you could use that right now. And then the um, holding sheets, I'm just gonna stick it right back in here so I don't lose them. And then I'm just gonna scrape this down. 
Now with vinyl and anything on the Cricut mat, you always want to pull away from you. So what that means is you want to flip it over and you want to pull it down like this. This prevents it from wrinkling like that. Now I'm going to scrape it down again. And the nice part is we're not measuring off of the transfer tape. We're measuring off of the um, stencil that was cut. This blue stencil here should fit perfectly on our wood. Okay, again, we're going to peel up in a way. And then you could just toss this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick back the carrier sheets for the transfer paper that we used. And now once our wood sign is done drying, we are ready to put this on. Now we are going to paint with our stencil. You can pull it off here. You can put it on your clothes to make it a little less sticky. Huh, so I guess I did mess up and I didn't make it tall enough. That's okay, all right. I'm gonna line it up best I can. That looks pretty even to me. Okay, so now we're just varnishing to get all the little air bubbles out. You really wanna make sure that everything around each letter that you're gonna paint is stuck down well. Okay, so now we should be able to peel off the stent, the transfer tape. I'm going to put this back on the carrier sheet. Again, we can use this multiple times. All right. Oh. Okay, so clearly the M is not down. So, yeah. Sometimes you just need to use your fingers. So you can see when it's down, you can see the wood. So then I just like to go with my fingers. Like if a section like this isn't down, that's not a big deal. But around every letter it needs to be. Now something, I'm just gonna go ahead and paint with the white for the letters. Something you could do um, similar to that of when you're painting trim in your house is you could paint the blue first and then paint the, or I'm sorry, I do think this is black. Paint the base color and then paint the interior color to guarantee that it won't seep under the lines, but I'm a daredevil, so I'm just gonna do it. So these little jars, you could just shake them, which is nice, and you don't need that tool I showed you earlier. Just open it, and there's your color. And stir it to be super sure. All right, I'm using the same brush as I was earlier. It's just dried off. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna dab. You do not want to paint from side to side. You only want to dab and stay within your stencil. Okay, so there's the M and the E, and then you just keep going. So I'm gonna leave this to dry a little bit and then I'm gonna come back and do a second coat. Now this time it's okay if it's laying on the ground because um, the side isn't wet anymore. I mean, you could put it up if you want, it's up to you.
Now I have two coats of paint on here. So for the next step, there are two schools of thought. One, peel when wet. Two, peel when dry. I'm teal, team peel when wet. So I'm gonna peel it now. And I'm just gonna go ahead, start peeling. Uh, see it's coming up a little. There's my sign. I'm gonna be honest with you, I hate the way that paint on paint signs turn out. I much prefer vinyl on paint. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so here is our final project. So I went back and filled in all the little holes and here's the sign done. So what I was trying to say was that I really don't like the way paint on paint looks. It's very imperfect, it's not precise, and I could just never get it to be as perfect as I want it to be. So this sign is made painted with vinyl. And compare the two, I definitely prefer the vinyl. It's quicker, it's easier, you only have to wait for the paint to dry one time, and it's consistent. How you would go about making it this way is when you get to the, so you get your permanent, permanent vinyl and then cut it out the same way I suggested before. And then instead of weeding out the letters, you leave the letters and weed everything else. And then you place it down with the transfer paper, just like you would with the stencil. And then you're done. You can either um, seal it with Mod Podge or just leave it be. This is just regular, has nothing on it, but this is my preferred method. You could do it either way. And if you were using the stencils like that I pointed out at Home Depot that were just the individual letters and stuff, so, and you made it this way, you just like tape them together and go ahead and paint them. And then you could add any stickers or freehand stuff. It's totally up to you. So definitely looking at it this way, I think the final conclusion is that yes, the paint is black. <laughs> I was really on the fence on if it was black or white, or sorry, black or uh, blue. Anyways, so thank you so much for joining me today. Let me know any of your suggestions, if you make wood signs, uh, how you would like to go about making them. All right. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a great day. Goodbye.